Hello, everybody. Always and goodies back. Got some rest. Rough night last night. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this is my, uh, this video is brought to you by the letter C. <laughs> Let's get a coin up there. Get it nice and pretty there for you. Letter C. Uh, we did the Canada. This, you know, pretty much took one video. This one's going to take a little longer than the Canadian video. Hopefully not as long as the first video. But, uh, yeah, China's uh, next runner-up is in the A to Z alphabet. Uh, everyone, uh, I've been uh, talking about the KM numbers. And as you see, it's a Y number not a km number okay that's a different cataloging with the same purpose to ident identify coins so we're going to talk a little bit before i get into showing you the coins uh why we use the km numbers and uh why there's different well i mean just from my knowledge and what I, what I could look up on, why do we use the Y numbers and not the, why not KM numbers? Well, Yeoman, which is uh, uh, why this, this stands for Y, was a publisher of, of coin books, as well as the Krauss and uh, for the KM number. So we're going to go, before I get into showing you any coins, we're just going to do a little uh, knowledge thing that, you know, uh, which, which page do I want? I think it's this one here. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, this one here. Okay. KM numbers, uh, I'll read it to you, are a numbering system for the world coins created by the off for world coins created by the authors of the standard catalog Chester Krauss, which stands for the K, and Clifford Mishler, which is the M, KM, which was first printed in 1972. The authors astutely realized that it would make it easier for the collectors to use their reference guide and to be able to discuss specific coins. Well, just like uh, Ken PV and CoinOp and all that, they're coming up with an identification system for the error varieties. And there's like, uh, you know, three or four different uh, uh, catalog numbers type deals, you know, uh, on BDO, WD, WDD, you know, and all that stuff. Couple different varieties of uh, identifying coins as an error coin with a specific uh, catalog number. Uh, so hopefully they'll get get that off straightened out, and uh, that's why there's like three or four pages, to, uh, different pages to go to for error coins. Well, same thing with the world coins. There's multiple books and. Um, publishers that have tried to catalog coins and KM is the pretty much pretty much world known uh, through Numesta and PCG, PGS, PGCS, etc. Anyways, and as I was explaining on the KM numbers, it has a number for first coin of that e of that country and then it works its way up. Okay, and it starts up with a lower denomination and it gets the next designated number with the KM in front. <clears throat> so they're showing you this Maritwana coin, which is an island. Um, and one fifth Oyagia, oh, I killed it. Okay, uh, in 1973, this became a country and they designated the number KM1 for, let's just say it's a half cent, okay? 
they designated as KM1, and then when it went, uh, they produced the once uh, the one cent, okay, who KM2, and so on and so on up the line uh, to a full dollar or whatever KM6. Now, the coin started at 73, follows the denomination, and has changed its design slightly and was given a new number, number six. Oh, I'm sorry. They changed the one penny, excuse me, I never would that one down. So because they changed the design, which is kind of what I showed on uh, the shout out to uh, Rivendell yesterday, is they changed the design just a little bit where it became KM number six. Now this is cool, I was talking about the decimal points, you know, point this, and they also have a point A, B, C type deal. And this page you can look at for yourself, but when a killing gets a new design, even the slight change usually gives, gives it a new number. Great Britain, the pound coin cycles through different reverse designs to signify four members of the United Kingdom. Great Britain, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and Wales. Each of these reverse designs gets its own KM number because it's a different design of, of the four of that same denomination. And sometimes a small design change receives a decimal point number, like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, instead of the entire new number. So that's where you'll see 0 0.2, 0 0.1 version, blah, 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 different versions. Now when a coin's composition of the metal is changed, let's say it went from silver or copper to zinc, uh, usually it does not get a whole new KM number because the design is still the same. They just add a letter, uh, letter to it, which is KM1 with A as the number. Uh, because the writer is saying it was made of bronze and then they changed it to copper clad steel version of that same coin for that same year. Just a little design change. Um, it's important to note that the, are uniquely within a country, most countries, like I said, each country starts out with one and then it works its way up. So let's say there's like a thousand different design changes, it's going to be a thousand numbers, and it might be a thousand numbers with decimals and uh, the lettering system for different uh, versions of the, of the denomination coin. Uh, I'm going to skip down to here. Now this is what I, uh, my first coin I just pulled up. It starts with a Y number or a Y and a number which is Y356. We're going to go back to uh, showing the coins off. But it's uh, the modern world coins and current coins of world Richard S. Yeoman. Pretty interesting. And then they might see a C number and a K number, and none of these would have a KM number. And that's why they, they still utilize these numbers of uh, designation. Um, coins of world 715 to 1850. Now I'm gonna go to a different page and talk about Yeoman. And like I said, all these things will be in link below. And these are all the different handbooks and stuff. And by R.S. Yeoman, the Red Book. Okay. And he was, uh, uh, there's a thing about him somewhere. Uh, let's see. No. Okay. Well, anyways, uh, I'll, I'll throw that up there for the Yeoman because um, he's part of the Red Book. Uh, they created the Red Book and all as, as a publisher. And in, in 2018 or something, uh, I think it was 2017, 16, and, uh, they, somebody else took over the Red Book, and then there's another. But they still list the Yeoman and, uh, as the publisher of the book. Okay, well... We'll go back to uh, stop sharing for now.
Okay, getting to the coins. This is the best part, right? All we want to see what the coins are. This is a 1940 China year 29. Now, uh, there's another thing though. You know, you got there's so much to learn about coins and world. You know, different countries and how they perceive. Well, year 29 is the 29th year of let's say that dynasty. Okay, um, and then another dynasty comes up. I'm, don't don't quote me, but this is how I perceive it as. And they they'll start out with year one again, type deal, and then work their way up. And uh, they work their way up, and then this it starts out a wife. This one's three fifty six is number. The value of the coin. This is a really, really, really nice coin, especially for the metal content. I think this goes, uh, uh, yep, side to side. Yep. This goes down to the bottom. Okay. And to get the date, okay, these two symbols here, let's see, right here on a Chinese coin, is going to be the dynasty. Which is the year 29 or whatever, say what dynasties, Ching, Chang. And down here, yeah, I do have it upside down, so it's, it's side to side. I can tell by the, the way the hieroglyphics are set up. Anyways, the plus, boom, boom. Okay, well, now we're going to get into another class of trying to identify coins because we don't know what year, even though I put the year down on the Thing. You have no idea what year that is, and what coin it actually is. It China? Is it Japanese? Is it Taiwan? Is it the, you know, South Korea? Well, each country has their own little hieroglyphics that they use. I, that's what I'm calling hieroglyphics. They're uh, the way they view their alphabet, and this is their numbering system from here to here. I think this is the dynasty thing. This well, this would actually be the dynasty or the year. But year 29 would equal this. Now, too bad my calculator doesn't do Chinese because Chinese is pretty tough. And I'm going to go to reading coin dates. Oh, I forgot to do something. Hold on. Go back to the video. <laughs> All right, we're going to share this and pull this up. This is another little just an insightful thing about the Chinese numbers. They're completely nowhere near uh, or close to Japan numbers, blah, blah, blah. These are their symbols. Okay, and you'll find these on the back of the coin. And you can look at, look at the coin. Now this, pretty much for the newer coins, uh, 19th and 20th century coins because a lot of them put dates on them now. Well, not all of them. But this would equal one, this would equal two. It makes sense, right? Three dashes means three. I don't know, square is four. This has five legs on it. Two, four, six legs on that. Uh, two, four, see, I don't know about that, see? But anyways, this is how you can identify. You know, of course, you gotta have four symbols to make the four numbers that you need uh, for that coin. And then uh, we'll go back to, st we'll stop sharing and go back to this coin. Okay, so shorten this, uh, try, to, try to keep it as short as possible, but uh, these numbers here, and you see the, uh, there's my little pointer thing. You see that right there where the two is, that's a two, okay, a plus. Now I'm probably looking at this reverse, so it's probably going the other way. <laughs> and then uh, you got that there with the uh, seven, I think there's seven legs. Plus, I don't know. But anyways, uh, those four did, Four symbols right there is going to give you the date. And here identifying the Chinese symbols, 
Well, that's another thing you got to learn too. And I don't actually have the uh, actual uh, community stop. I don't have the actual uh, link for what I really want, but this is uh, one of them to identify the symbols of the coin. And these are the most common ones. So, and this is non-Ching Chinese cash coins and all. We'll get into that uh, some other time. Probably, maybe, for sure. All right, we'll stop share. Okay, let's get back to the coins. All right, this is a, a Lunament coin. And as you can see, it's, it's almost like a brand circulated. There's no pitting, no dirtiness, no smudges, no corrosion. It's a pretty nice coin, and that's why it's worth around two two dollars somewhere on there. And as you see, it's got some design in the middle there. But this is a five pen. If you look up that KM number that I that I that I've got that was assigned, it'll show you that coin and all that other glory. Okay, now we're gonna go on to a, another five pen coin. This is a little newer. That was like 1940. This is an 86. And look at all those symbols. Well, that's, this is the obverse of the coin. They got the stars and the wreath and all that. It's pretty cool. And like a side to side, right? Yep, there. See, this one actually depicts the uh, denomination this time. And it gives you the date. So that makes it a lot easier. But that's a 5 fan 1986. This is also made. Aluminum, linen, and anemium, <laughs> and uh, very, very, very nice looking coin. All right, friend, they got some. Uh, now, Zhao Zhuan Wan Yan uh, Sen, they're, they're all, you know, the denominations that they use. There's another thing, which I think that's their crest, you know, using the <laughs> big star and all that and this is km335 as you see they're not all wise just certain coins that the trust did not uh, identify because i guess they already had a y attached to it i don't know side to side and this is a one yi gyro which i think that means one gyro uh, Probably killing that. And see, that's got the date on it, and that's on the obverse, which the other coin had it on the reverse. And nice little design. And I didn't put down, I guess I'll have to work on that coin. Uh, I didn't put down what the uh, metal content was. There's a one, one, which I think is a little higher than a Gyro. <laughs> I am not Chinese either. <laughs> KM 1212, 1,212 varieties. And that was the number it was assigned to. And that was, you know, that's why I'm kind of trying to show you. All right, we lost it. There we go. Okay, same thing. It was hieroglyphics. Now you can look at the high, you know, the, you know, the artwork there, the lettering, and you could almost say, you know, after you've been had a few coins of these, you can guarantee you know that's a Chinese coin compared to Taiwan or, uh, you know, Thailand and all that. They they have their own unique, you know, alphabet uh, showing. Sorry, side to side, but nice little plant life there. I don't know what it is. Uh, there's another, there's KM1210. And China produced a lot of coins, a lot of different varieties they changed. But that's, this is a one Gile. The one I just showed you was a one Young, 2011. Very nice looking coin. Oh, there's another one I didn't uh, fill out the back yet, you know, for the mintages and it's aluminum, I'll tell you that right now. But yeah, it's one Gio. 
And that's another way to tell the newer coins of what uh, country it's from. Uh, here we go. Here's a one yon, yon, which is different than the other one. The, the one I showed you was a 2001. This is a 97. This has got the crest on it. This has got a big flower plant. They're both one yon. But see, they changed the design so quickly that uh, uh, there's another one I got to get into. I must have just forgot about it and put it in my book. All right, here's a five gyro. It's all like kind of like a five cent piece. You know, like one gyro, five gyro. One yuan would be like a dollar or something like that. KM 1411. And there you go. Now they work on, or five pen might, might, pen might be uh, dollars. I don't know. I can't tell you on the denominations of these coins. <laughs> I'll tell you what they say. How's that? 2001, five gyro. A different one. Yep, see this one's got the flower and that one's got the crest. So I'm wondering if KM 1411 is a kind of like a commemorative and then 336 is like the uh, the actual coin system. See, I missed that one. This one's pretty nasty. It's uh probably silver or copper plated steel or something because the way it's corroding there who knows how long that coin will last okay for the special treat this is the oldest coin in my collection now i've gotten rid of uh my roman coin which was uh 340 to 360 a.d and it was a uh, constantine coin and I won that on Clash Guitar of Shane. I gave it to a friend of mine. This I found actually metal detecting. And the square hole looks kind of rounded. So, and if you look, see how worn it is. Of course, it's going to be worn. It's 1068 to 1085. It's a two cash coin, not a one cash coin. And I had to do some really searching to find these symbols. Okay, to find out what dynasty it was. Yang Feng Kyung Pao, Northern Sun Dynasty, from the years 1068 to 1085. Now, this coin was made in all those years, give or take. And they made millions of them. They're all they're made of brass, and as you see, you see even the back is completely missing of any design. And see how the square hole used to be? Now it's rounded. So somebody wore it as a necklace, and the Shenzong Emperor was the uh, you know, emperor of the, that country, or that part of the country in China. He made the bronze. But I found this metal detecting here in Fort New York a long, long time ago, back in the 80s. Uh, I had another one, it was a one cash coin, and I gave that out as a gift as well. But it was a uh, 1600 to 1700 uh, cash coin. Much better shape than this one is, but that's my oldest coin uh, in my collection. Last but not least on this uh, um, China, China, Chinese collection. <laughs> I don't have 20 coins as you can see, but I'm slowly getting there. Is this coin right here? Originally struck in 1909. This is a 1920. I don't see. There you go. Now you can see a little better of it. It's a restrike in 1922 of a 20 cash coin, and these could go up to higher than 150 dollars for condition and what what actual you know. There's so many different varieties of this this copper coin made by different dynasties okay and it's they also make counterfeit 
ones as well. And that's something you gotta you gotta learn. Um, I went and made sure, and all the way through, after I had already purchased it, I got I'm not sure what I paid for it. I know I paid more than two dollars and fifty cents for it. <laughs> um, but um, as you see, it's got the dragon. Pretty cool. Always remind the you know the little dragon flying around and all that. You're the dragon stuff. It's pretty cool. And uh, this is a, like I said, they call it a restrike. And restrikes are not counterfeit. They're just redone or remade or, and then a um, the little bit of design changes. And as you can see, the, uh, this here is a dynasty. Starting with this here is what tells you what dynasty it is. And then the rest follows. And then uh, the actual, Right there, you got those four characters right there. There's a three in it. That means three, blah, 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 something like that. And that tells you the date of the coin. And yes, yeah, it's, it's been rubbed a little bit. <laughs> it's been used, but it's a, it's a nice coin that I didn't have. And I have one now, and that's got a Y21.3 is the designation because of all the different varieties this is a 0.3 variety y21 this is the designation on the yeoman red book they also like i said they also did the blue book and the brown book yeoman did you know back in the day i think it was uh i think ken Peavy was talking about the blue books back in the day and first books ever came out with and then you had whitman all right, moving on. We're out of we're out of the hard learning, <laughs> the hard learning thing. But like I said, I'm going to leave it on there. Uh oh. Tip dump. Oh, we lost the camera. Come on, focus. There we go. Columbia. Which we all know where Columbia is, South America, and um, 283.2. So they had some type of uh, design change on one side or the other, obverse or reverse. So for that year, or for that year, or that um, run of that uh, design, there was a little bit of a design change. And it was going to 2.2. So if you. <laughs> The collecting old coins, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to know about what you're, uh, about each country or why this, why that. This is made of copper, nickel, zinc, and they made it three million. And I guess this is going to be up and down, I think. Yeah. Oh. Nope. Well, most all American coins are usually uh, top to bottom, but this is 50 pesos, it's like a half dollar. Okay, that's the only one I had at Columbia. It's it's kind of tough to, uh, you know, get some Southern, South American coins because they're small countries and they don't produce a lot of coins. I don't know, except for Mexico, or, you know, the more prominent countries. But Columbia, I only got the one. All right, Costa Rica, five colonies, 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 whatever. 2008, 227B, and remember I was saying about the different uh, uh, content metal change. There, there was a metal change where this is uh, aluminum. And it was probably copper nickel before that. And they changed it to aluminum. But uh, five colonies. And five BCCR. I'm going to go back to here and it should see it says Republic de Costa Rica in 2008. So there's a, there's a 2101. They changed the design of it a little bit from another coin. And I don't know if I have it. 
probably not. But this is our 1984 one colon. And we're not talking about anatomy. <laughs> stainless steel. Now I told you stainless steel is real nice. It's, you can scratch it. As you see, there's some scratches on, on the coin. But it, it usually holds its uh, nice shine and everything else. It looks almost like a crude coin sometimes because it still has, you know, the cartwheel and stuff. But anyways, there's a Costa Rica. Ten sometimes. Sometimes reminds me of French. So I'm wondering if this was a French... Uh, Oriented country before they, uh, and not Spanish, of course. Everybody thinks, you know, South America is all Spanish. It's not. There's actually German, too, <laughs> where the Germans were hiding out during the wars and stuff. And they had colonies and stuff. Anyways, 1951, that's a pretty old one. Well, I mean, 50s uh, for most people. And see, look at that. I had the orientation wrong. Yeah, I do. Okay, so if I go like that and then spin it, yeah, it's top and bottom. But for some reason, I didn't put it in the coin clip. Anyways, this Cooper nickel, which is top and nickel. All right, and here's a five colonies. Costa Rica, 1993. And I can pretty much tell you that's probably stainless steel. Nope. Nickel plated steel. So it's, it's uh, I don't, I didn't have a vintage at the time. I'm probably gonna go through these uh, coins that I pulled out here and make sure I got everything on, information on the coins like I wanted to. Costa Rica, 1948, another old one. And uh, there we go. Camera keeps flipping out as soon as I put my fingers in the line. KM-175. Man, my orientation is wrong or the coin is wrong. If we flip this just like this, yeah, my orientation in the clip is wrong. I don't think I, I think I got them from somebody and I just put the labels on, which makes sense. Okay, 215.1, which means a design change from somewhere uh, while they were minting them for the designation. And this is made of stainless steel. But it's a hard, stainless steel is a hard, a hard metal. You got to put a lot of pressure onto stamping these coins and stuff. Okay, well let's see for Costa Rica. Uh, there's uh, Croatia. That's 50 Lipa. All right, let's get it so we can see it. Nowhere. Okay. It's got the date on it, 1993, KM8, it's the 8th coin, um, 8th variety of that uh, country. I'm not sure what 50 Libras is, this might be 50 cent piece. And this is made of nickel plated steel, but nowhere does it say Republica H-R-V-A-T-S-K-A. And this is a Croatian coin. No. Stop, stop, stop messing around. There we go. Yeah, like I said, you, it's got the date on it. It's got the, the amount on it, 50 Lipa. You can find out, identify it by the uh, denomination because I don't know very many foreign coins that uses the uh, Lipa. Lipa as a as a as a num you know for a numbering system for monetary value. There's lira, 
could not leap on. All right, and then uh, we're going to Cuba. We're going to get some uh, Habana cigar cigars. Cam 9.1, 1920, Cuba. And government of 19 million and made the room. Yeah, this I got from somebody else. As you can see, it was mailed to me. And I just left it in the same holder. I had no, didn't pull it out. I don't know what that mark is there. It looks like somebody tried dipping it, maybe. <laughs> but it doesn't have it on the front. Yeah, I guess it does. It's got a little black spot there. Huh? I don't know. Another Cuban coin, 1981. Probably got the orientation wrong on it. This was another coin that was sent to him. What did I find out about this coin? Nothing. Okay. Ten cent towels. A 94 Cuban. Ten cent towels. The other one was an eighty-one. This is a, another design of the ten cent. Diez centavos. Diez. Everybody knows that's Spanish for ten. Nickel plated steel, of course. Is that all the men? All the countries are going to the cheapest metal they can make coins out of because it's costing them a fortune to make them. Uh, we're in the Cyprus Island, which I think is part Italian. You know, um, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. I have to look it up. I didn't. I didn't pull the uh, thing up for it. So, 62.2 nickel is made of nickel brass. So I don't know if the brass was brass nickel. Brass. It doesn't say if it's nickel plated brass. But it looks like it's brass on the outside. So, all right. Uh, I have three of those, three Cypress ones. Let's take a look at this one a little. See if we can get it to adjust. Yeah. Yeah. Just too shiny. Oop. Come on. There we go. Now we can see it. Cypress. It says Cypress. 1996. And of course, all the shadows. That's side to side. Somebody riding a bull or a goat or some type of animal. Can't tell. Uh, can't see what that down below. It's got some type of design to it, arrows and stuff pointing up. It's 50, uh, 50 cent coin. I guess they started going into cents. And here's an 83. <coughs> Pan 38. One mil. A lot of different. Uh, and. Each country is going to, like, we have our cents and we have our dollars. Uh, each country is, you know, their terminology is based on what monetary system they had back in the day and what they came up with. There's nothing on that side except one. Good thing it said Cypress on it, right? See, it don't even say Cypress on it. So you'd have to look that up on, uh, let's say, Google or whatever, and type in those letters to, to know that it was Cyprus. All right, not too much longer. Here's my country. Am I in the right one? No, I'm in the wrong section. Okay. Oh, you know what? I got these all backwards. We're at CY, I'm in the CZ, and I missed all these uh, CAs from Canada. It's now Cayman Islands. Okay. Doesn't matter. This is brought to you by the letter C.
there's Cayman Islands. It's a BU coin, but you can see it's got scuff marks on it. Who knows? But you'll like the ship, right? A lot of people like the ship. And that's made of nickel plated steel. It means you can pick it up with a magnet. <laughs> Go magnet fishing and find them in the water. There's a one cent. Now, I don't know who that is. Is that Queen Elizabeth? Yes, it is. Boy, there is some British control again. Part of the Cayman Islands. Copper plated steel. You can find that in the water. Of course, if it's in salt water, there's not going to be much left to it. Nice little birdie on the front back. The reverse. Very nice. Yeah, I had these uh, in the wrong order. Okay. And the 96, Queen Elizabeth. 88A. Now, that's be, like I said, because they changed the metal content. I got a feeling this is probably was copper nickel. And they changed it to nickel plated steel. Don't know how many was minted. It wasn't on the website when I looked it up. Like I said, some of these coins go back a few years when I got them. 82 came in on a 10 center. KM3 became a country in 82. Yep, that's what I'm thinking. So somewhere in 82, they uh, became a country or British said, we're gonna make we're gonna make coinage for you to your country. You just gotta be part of our group. <laughs> Copper nickel, uh, minted uh, no mintages but ten cents. And another one, ten center, nineteen ninety-two. Over to Queen Elizabeth with the crown. Letter A, metal content change, nickel plated steel, which was probably copper nickel. KM89. Didn't take them long to get up some high numbers. There's a KM8. You know, oh, okay, this is Cameroon, which I think is Africa, under the French, uh, French de denomination, one franc. 1948, very nice coin for the year of it. Of course, this goes top to bottom. That's made of aluminum. It's got a big horned deer on there, African antelope. And you see one franc territories. Do Cameroon. I think there was a movie with Cameroon in it. It was a cartoon from Disney or something. Ceylon, which I uh, think is, uh, I'm guessing maybe uh, South Middle Asia, uh, like India. Matter of fact, I think it says India there, but this is an actual emperor of India. This is Ceylon, so I guess I was right. It's right around uh, India and Nepal, and there's the country, Ceylon. 1944, scalloped and made of nickel brass, so brass brass plated nickel. Thirty million of them. And I know this isn't a very cheap coin, but it's another hard one to get, especially the age. Right. I'm going to save my uh, my my country for last. And since I already did China, now we're going back to Chile, <laughs> South America. There you go. Get there so you can see it. Presidents of all these young kids on the uh, as a president for the country. 20 centavos, top to bottom, okay. 20 centavos. Some type of pillars on the side. 
and that's made of copper. Like dirt. There's a hundred pesos. A hundred dollars must be the uh, hyperinflation. And see, this one's got a some type of buzzard on the right <laughs> and a jackalope on the left, I guess, a deer or something. And that's their crest that they're using. And I said top to bottom, so yep, there you go. 100 pesos. Boy, that's like a hundred dollar bill, right? Nah, probably worth about a dollar now. Chili one peso. See, looks like a young kid on there. A little beardish. Sideburn. <laughs> 208A, another uh, change of, you know, metal, metal, metal content. One peso, and it's aluminum bronze. So I'm thinking the other one was originally brass um, before they changed this one. Uh, metal content out. All right. And, oh, this one I, this one I got from SJ. Well, this one isn't, no, this one isn't. I got one from SJ, but I already had one. That's what I meant, because this is a coin that was sent to me from a few years back. It's a 1965, 10 sometimes. Got the old buzzard on there. <laughs> I'm thinking it's a buzzard. Maybe we'll call it a chicken. And 10. There you go. Centestimos. <laughs> Centestimos. I don't know what the letter S is there. I didn't bother paying attention. There's also an E up above. But it's the 10 cent testimonials. Nothing too special about it except for the bird. Big old chicken. Here's another coins I like, bimetal coins. 2017. And this one, I can't remember where I got it from. I think that, I don't know. But hey, five hundred dollars. I mean, five hundred pesos, <laughs> which is probably worth about five bucks, as far as you know, change that you can use today. Five dollars in American. There's a fifty peso. There's that guy again. The side ones. Ah, come on. Republic of the Chile. Fifty pesos. And that's a real nice coin. Beauty stop. Oh, okay. I got all these from Amy recently. These chili coins. Her son brought them back for me. And that's why they're new new ones, because uh these are all new labels and etc. Not sure the mint is on it. Copper nickel. Is the center and then aluminum and bronze on the outside. So a couple mixtures, and then there's their crest that they use. Buzzard and the jackalope. That's what I'm calling it. There's a one peso, chili. See, I only had a couple coins from Chile. And all these coins I got from her, there's like seven of them. Uh, her son got for me. Let's see. I just I put the right way and I messed it up. One peso, this is made of aluminum. No mintage is shown, 2008. Somebody wasn't doing their job and keeping track of how many, how many coins were made. There's another nice looking coin. It was uh, brand new to me too, right? But, yeah. 10 pesos and it's nickel brass, so brass plated nickel. Very nice. Okay, last but not least, I'm gonna see that way I can get it done and over with. I hope this video turns out because there's a hell to go back to. This is my country, this is my nationality. 
Czechoslovakia. And if you look, it says Czechoslovakia, Socialist Republic, meaning, you know, communism or socialist. Uh, 1964, love the Griffin. The, a lot of the coins in, you know, the areas over there uses the Griffin. And 10, nothing special on the back. Big star up there, Socialist Republic star. <laughs> the red star. And that's a 10 Halura, Halura. And just so happens that was the year I was born, 1964. That's my nationality. And I got a few. I would like to finish this collection off for sure. This is a two Caroni. Caroni. This is 73. Extra fine. And you can tell it's really, really nice, nice shape. I'm not sure if those are scrappy. Why or not? Don't look like it. And these go side to side in the dining orientation. I didn't put down the content of the metal. See, I miss. I did some. I probably got in a hurry. To see the big socialist star up there. And Czechoslovakia. Twenty Halera in 1972. There we go. Socialist Republic, Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia. Not ski. <laughs> Even though the countries are attached. 20, how are you? Yeah. And then here's a one corona. 1980. Room of bronze, and she's, I guess, picking flowers, or he, she, I don't know. <laughs> Got some dreads there. And then uh, 92 CSFR, one crown. Got a nice little crest there. Got the griffin, double cross, griffin down to the bottom. Let's go out. Oh. There we go. Another one that's picking flowers. Now, here's the thing. 80 and 92. The same design on the back. Reverse. Same image. Let's uh, block it again. Ready? And boom. No? Too much? There we go. Same design. But uh, 10 years apart. So, and that's the reverse. So the reverse change stayed the same. But they changed the design in the beginning of it. Oops. And they're both one crew. Uh, 151. And 50. Okay, now here's the problem. My country is no longer a country. They, they separated and split in two. There is now considered Czech Republic and then Slavnia instead of Czechoslovakia. They have they made two countries out of one country. They split. And this is a 94 Czech Republic, which happened recently, you know, late, uh, early 90s, something like that, late 80s, and they decided to go their own way. Czech Republic still maintaining the Griffin. And this is what, what did I say, it was five corona? I didn't, I don't think I did. Yeah, they maintain the monetary value system. Five Karun or Karuna. And 
no longer a socialist republic. I don't think it is because I don't see the star anymore. And then here's the uh, only other coin I got from you know, it was 2003. So up in years. Czech Republic, 10 Karun. And well, pictures. Anyways, that's that's all I've got uh, to show you today. I don't need to show you that. So, anyways, everybody have a good day, a good week, and uh, we'll come back with the letter D tomorrow. Hopefully, it isn't as long as this, but you know how it is. Uh, I want to get through the alphabets. So, everybody have a good day and. See you on the live streams. Bodies out. <laughs>